Okay. Probably cursed myself by making a joke at Zoom's expense, but I'd like to look at today in the classwork section from the practice you're engaging in, not that one. I misremembered the page, sorry. This one. So you did a little bit of work on this one. Oh, before I proceed, we're pretty good on the smart board page being shared, right? That's the one we see, it looks good. Okay, somebody let me know in some fashion if it doesn't look good. So I've mentioned how you wanna read and reread. So I hope you did this problem and you read and reread it a bunch of times. And if you got stuck, that's okay. <laughs> but I would like to talk about it nonetheless. So we've got a 13 foot ladder against a vertical wall. The lower end of the ladder is pulled away. How fast is the top end moving? And then there's two parts here. So the first thing I like to do, regardless of what the questions are that's being asked, is I just like to do those general ideas of reading, rereading, because the reading and rereading helps me in the picturing process. And the picture doesn't have to be a picture. It can just be a mental picture. So I'm saying you don't have to draw anything, but I'm gonna draw something that way you've got a written record of what's going on. So here's what I'm imagining. I've got a wall. Right, that's a vertical wall. And then there's the ground. And one thing that I forgot to mention before I started, and I apologize for, is when you're doing these problems, there is so much struggle involved because you're trying to figure out what's going on. I'm gonna do it and to some extent it's gonna feel easy when I do it because remember I've done these problems before and many of them multiple times. So I have a great deal of familiarity, not just for related rates, but with the actual problems we're studying. So you may go through the picturing stage where you have to picture it multiple times. And I don't just mean drawing and scratching out multiple pictures, I mean the processing piece of it. So don't be discouraged if you don't access a problem as quickly as I do or someone else does. You gotta work through this at your own pace and that's the relevant, necessary encouragement I wanna pass along to you. It's gotta be you working at your own pace. And for some of us, that means we end up having to do a little bit more work for a little bit longer than other people. And we just need to be okay with that because remember what our goal is. Our goal is for ourselves to do what we need to, to be successful. And that's gonna come on our own clock. Anyway, back to the problem, we have the ladder. Okay, so ladder is here. Now, I think it's pretty reasonable to say that the wall and the ground make a right angle. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to say. And so I'm looking at this and the first thing I'm thinking about here is the, the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, okay. So I'm thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse, which I'm just gonna say is the ladder or L squared, that's gonna equal W or the wall squared plus the ground squared. You don't have to use L, W, and G. You could use A, B, and C or X, Y, and Z. That's irrelevant. But regardless of what you choose, when you use the Pythagorean theorem, you differentiate with respect to time and you have some equation equivalent to this one. Okay. And I think it's really, really important for you to sit down and then even if you're not gonna write it out, think it out. So I'm not gonna write it out this time, but I am gonna think it out each time or this time. And I'm gonna think out each of these six variables. So there's six variables here. And to make it so you can know which one I'm talking about, I'm gonna have a little red arrow that I'm gonna move around here to tell you what I'm looking at. So L, what's L? L is the length of the ladder, okay? DL, DT, what's that one? That is the change over time in the length of the ladder. What's W? W is from the ground to the top of the ladder. DW, DT, that's the change in that length. G, that is the distance or length between where the ladder meets the ground and the wall. So it's along the ground there. And DG, DT, that is the rate of change of that length. So the length from 
the wall, where the wall and the ground intersect, so at the right angle, to wherever it is the ladder is. And remember what's happening. What's happening is that ladder is being pulled along the bottom. So what happens when you pull along the bottom is the ladder slides along the top too. So let's actually sit down and try to do some solving. Uh, we want to determine how fast is the top of the ladder coming down the wall at the instant the top is 12 feet. So, how fast is the top of the ladder coming down the wall? What's that going to be? Well, it's not going to be LW or G. Those are distances. It's going to be DL, DT, DW, T, DT, or DG, DT. So, as I've written it as W is the wall, when the ladder comes down the wall, the distance between the top of the ladder and where the wall hits the ground, that's the thing that's changing. So that is gonna be DW DT. That's what I'm solving for. All right. So then what is the information that I need? Well, I need W, G and L. I know L is 13. That's spelled out in the beginning. Um, what is that 12 feet? The instant the top is 12 feet above the ground. That's W. Okay, so I don't know what G is. So I don't know what G is, but I can get G. How do I get G? I use the Pythagorean theorem. G is five feet, okay? If I'm solving for DW, DT, not only do I need to know L, W, and G in the equation, I also need to know DL, DT, and DG, DT. The latter being pulled away at a rate of two feet per second. What's that changing? Which distance? Is that changing the length of the ladder? Is that changing the length from the top of the ladder to the ground? Or is that changing from the wall to the end of the ladder? It's changing from the wall to the end of the ladder. So that is going to be DG DT. So I know DG DT is two feet per second. Now it's not really necessary for this problem, but I think it's necessary overall to at least think about, are these quantities going to be positive or negative? So how about it, dw, dt? What would you expect that distance? Is that distance getting larger? Is that distance getting smaller? Well, that distance is getting smaller because the top of the ladder is getting closer to the ground. Okay, so I'm almost there. The only thing I don't know is dl, dt. Hmm. So what's dl, dt? The LDT is zero. Now, how do I know DLDT is zero? Because I have pictured this problem. I've spent time reading it, rereading it, thinking through my equation, doing all the stuff I need to. And this is a conclusion I reach because the ladder's length doesn't change. Now, something that happens a lot doing related rates is getting one of these values to be zero really makes our life easy. So we get addicted to that. We get addicted to making our life easy. So we want to always have a zero for a measure. And we often don't. So anyway, to make a long story short, because dl dt is zero, I have the equation zero equals 2 times 12 times dw dt, that's what I'm solving for, plus 2 times 5 times positive 2. So look at that equation. You should have noticed how this equation is similar to a lot of the equations that come from related rates, wherein you end up with, after doing all of that hard, sweaty labor, something that's not too terribly difficult to deal with. 
So I'm not going to do letter B. I'm just going to say letter B is the same thing as we just did, but this time the difference is W is 12. So it's worth it to you to go ahead and figure out what you're missing out on by trying letter B on your own. And the units are gonna be in feet per second. And just like we'd expect DW DT is negative, but what's interesting is we answer with a positive answer in both cases because it says how fast, which is speed. Anyway, I'm gonna pause recording here. With the correction that W is five, we're gonna draw our attention here to number six, which is one of the questions I believe you worked on. So this one, a camera is mounted 3000 feet from a rocket launching pad. The camera needs to swivel as the rocket is launched, keep it in focus. If the rocket is rising vertically at 800 feet per second, when it is 4,000 feet high, how fast is the camera, rocket, camera to rocket distance changing? So this is why the picturing is really important. And when I say picturing, it doesn't have to be a picture, it just needs to be processing. So the camera to rocket distance is this thing right here. That is how far it is from the camera to the rocket. I'm going to use Z and X and Y. And we're going to agree that this is calling for a right triangle because when you launch something, it typically launches, especially when someone launches a rocket, you want it perpendicular to the ground. Um, physics reasons, I won't get into that here or there. So what we're solving for, how fast is that changing? That's dz dt. All right, so then how does the Pythagorean theorem sound? Sounds pretty good to me. So we got the huge derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt, derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt, derivative of z squared is 2z dz dt. From here, it's very, very similar to the latter problem we just looked at. So it's going through and it's figuring out what X means. So X is the distance from the camera to the rocket's launch pad. Y is the distance from the launch pad to the rocket. DX DT is the change in distance from the camera to the launch pad. DY DT is the change in distance from the launch pad to the rocket. So 4,000 feet high tells us that Y is 4,000. Lots of colors today. 800 feet per second is talking about dy dt. And it's positive by the way, because the rocket is getting further from the ground. <laughs> That's what we want, okay? So how about X? Well, we know what X is. We've got X. Hmm, purple. And we know that dx dt equals zero in feet per second because the camera and launch pad, those aren't moving. So big picture, very, very similar problem to number five. 
I won't say there's a lot of Pythagorean theorem questions. I'm, I'm sorry, let me say, let me rephrase. I won't say that everything is a Pythagorean theorem question, but I will say that having a firm grasp on the Pythagorean theorem and different ways of it fitting into a situation matters significantly. Instead, what I want to focus with you on is B, because B says, how fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing at this moment in time? Because we haven't really thought of anything like this before. And I don't have an angle of, ele oh, I do have an angle of elevation. The angle of elevation is this thing right here. I'm gonna call it theta. So for part B, what I need to come up with is an equation that has the angle of elevation in it. Right, that's what you need. So it's not gonna be the Pythagorean theorem this time. There are three options. There are always three options. Where are those three options? They are right down here. Sine of theta, if I use theta as the angle of elevation, the angle at the camera is going to be opposite y over hypotenuse z. Cosine of theta, it's gonna be adjacent x over hypotenuse z. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite y over adjacent x. Here is your task. And if you've already completed this task, cool. You have a break. If you haven't completed this task, your task is to differentiate all three of these equations with respect to t. That's what you're going to be working on. I'll pause the recording. Continuing with the recording then. Those are your three derivatives with respect to t. Those are your different quantities spelled out for you in a hopefully helpful fashion to you. Should be appearing on your screen right now. The thing we're solving for is d theta dt. Now, what hasn't changed is any of those quantities that we talked about back here. So part B is the same situation as part A. We're just solving for a very different thing this time. So dy dt, y, x, z, dz dt, those are all the same. Now, one of the recommendations that's hinted at in this problem description is you should choose which of these three equations is easiest to work with. And the suggested course of action they recommend is this one. Now, you will get the same thing for all of these, regardless of which one you choose. The reason why they recommend this one is because dx dt is zero. So that simplifies your numerator, all right? Now you could say the same thing happens in the second equation, because there's a dx dt over here too. So you're making the blue marks, I hope. And that is also going to simplify. That one simplifies as well, right? You just end up with dy dt over x. Mm -hmm. So those are easier equations to work with potentially. But there's one thing that isn't mentioned at all that I think is relevant here. In order to make any of these equations work, we don't know what theta is. Well, the value of theta, that's a better way of phrasing what we're looking for. So what is theta's value? And you're gonna look at it and you're like, theta isn't in the problem. And you'd be right. If you think that means we can't solve this, 
that's where you'd be wrong. So you may have noticed we've done this in your practice and I've done it a couple of times today. You may need to actually calculate the value. And I'm just going to tell you, it's usually easier to not consider the differential equation when you're doing that. So what I'm talking about, and what I think is probably best here, is if you use tangent. So in this case, tangent of theta, that's y over x. Y is the distance between the rocket and the ground, which we already know is 4,000, and the distance from the camera to where the rocket is launching is 3,000. So we want to solve this equation, which we can do with inverse tangent. So I believe the answer key does inverse tangent like this. You already know my preference is arc tangent, both are fine. Both are done the same way on the calculator, and I would do it in radians. So it seems like a good time for a break, doesn't it? And for the next part of what we're looking at, we are going to consider a particularly famous but extremely difficult problem. And we're going to do that for several things today. So this next one is about as hard as it's going to get when it comes to related rates. So if you haven't read it already, go ahead and listen to what I'm going to say. Water drains from a conical tank at a rate of two meters or two cubic meters, excuse me, per second. The tank is 16 meters high and its top radius is four meters. How fast does the water level fall when the water level is 12 meters high and two meters high? So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do this at 12 meters and leave it to you to figure out the two meters part. That's where you get some practice in. So before we get into those specific things, let's work on the picturing process. You may start to already have an idea of how these things fit in because you've done some related rates and you've paid attention and you've tried. So you you might look at this right away and you might say water drains from a conical tank at a rate of two cubic meters per second. You already know that that's talking about dv dt and dv dt is negative two cubic meters per second. You may not be that level of comfort yet and that's okay too. So another valid way of starting this is just to think about, okay, what do I know about cones? Well, we looked at surface area formula, we looked at the volume formula. That's another valid way to try to picture this. And if we're talking about water draining, that means the water was inside. And when you're inside something, we're thinking about volume. So the volume formula cone of a cone, a right cone is one third pi r squared h. And it's very close to the volume of a cylinder, isn't it? Yeah, there's plenty of demonstrations of this on the internet, so I'm not going to do it with you. But what I am going to ask you to do is recall something that we looked at before. We looked at taking the derivative of this thing before with respect to time. So if we do that for capital V, that's dv dt. And then what happens on the right-hand side that's very, very interesting here is we need the product rule. So if you missed this the first time and you didn't think of this the second time, that's okay. For the third time, I want you to be thinking about how if you have two variables multiplied together, you want to use the product rule. So I thought of this as R squared times H. So I've got a one third pi if I take the derivative of r squared first, that's 2r dr dt, and there's an h in there. 
right? So it's the constant one third pi, and then it's r squared times h. I did the derivative of r squared first, and then I have the constant one third pi times r squared, and the derivative of h is one dh dt. So this is another valid way of processing this. A third thing you could pursue is you could be thinking about how I've got a cone-shaped tank. I mean, who doesn't have a cone-shaped tank in their house filled with water? Like I, for one, can't imagine how that's possible. OK, so that's the cone-shaped tank. And inside the cone-shaped tank is the water. Right? That's the water. OK. And so what's happening is the water is running out through the bottom at this rate. OK. So we look at this, and when we think to ourselves, OK, dv dt is 2. Now I'm screwed, because that's all I got. I know dv dt is 2. I don't know r, h, dr, dt, or dh, dt. I'm missing four things. That's a really hard equation to solve when you're missing four things, right? Yeah, that's extremely hard to solve when you're missing four things. We know exactly one of these things. We know one of them, dv dt is negative two. We don't know what r is, h is, dr dt, r and dh dt are. But what I do need to make sure you understand before we proceed, and I'm taking the time to write this down with you, This is all about the water. Water drains. That's the water. This is the volume of the water. This is the radius of the water. This is the height of the water. This is the change of the radius of the water in the tank. This is the change of the height of the water in the tank. None of these are referring to the tank. If you're draining water from the tank, does the tank, assuming it's rigid, of course, change? No, nothing about the tank changes. Not one single thing. So if you're like, but Mr. Lepkowski, you said we don't know R or H. We know that the tank is 16 meters high and its top radius is four meters. So R is four and H is, no, that is for the tank. The tank isn't changing. It's the water in the tank that's changing. And the only information I have is that. I mean, if we look at letter I, which we're going to now because we need to to make some progress here. If we look at letter I, we do have an additional piece of information about the water. We know that the water is 12 meters high. So we know H is 12. So that means we can say, okay, I don't know R, dr, dt, or dh, dt. I guess that's a little better, right? That's a little better. Not a lot better, but that's a little better. But if you think about it carefully, you're gonna realize that you can figure out what R is. And you're gonna be able to figure out what dr, dt is and dh, dt is. Actually, I lied. You probably would not think of this in any reasonable amount of time. That's why this is a particularly nasty problem to figure out. And I'm not casting aspersions on your ability. I'm not throwing shade on your math skill or your overall intellect. I'm saying that this problem is nasty. So here's the math that we use to get all the information we need to solve. The cones are similar figures. What I mean by similar figures is the same thing as, here's a really old movie reference, you may need permission from your parents to watch, Austin Powers. In Austin Powers, there's Austin Powers and there is Mini-Me. 
and Minnie-Me is one-fifth the size of Dr. Evil. They are similar. So what does it mean to be similar? That means they're the same thing, but different sizes. So you have Dr. Evil's head. Minnie-Me's head is one-fifth the size of Dr. Evil's head. Minnie-Me's arm is one-fifth, the left arm is one-fifth the size of Dr. Evil's left arm. That's what it means to be a similar figure. So the cones are similar figures. What does that mean? Their parts are proportional. This is the part that you might have figured out after studying this for a couple of hours. All right. So what does it mean to have proportional parts? So that means the tank and the water in the tank, that was supposed to be blue, sorry. They're similar figures. So that means their parts are proportional. So that means the radius and height of the tank is proportional to the radius and height of the water. Okay. So the radius and height of the tank are specified. The tank is 60 meters high and its top radius is four meters. So four to 16, that's proportional to the radius of the water and the height of the water. So this helps us a lot, doesn't it? First of all, this helps us because we know that the height of the water is 12. So we can say four sixteenths or one fourth, your choice doesn't matter. That's gonna equal the radius of the water divided by 12. So how do you solve this? Well, you're celebrating right now because it's cross multiplication. So 48 is 16 R, R is three. And when I say R, remember it's the radius of the water, not the radius of the tank. So that's one thing that's really useful here. The radius of the water is three meters. What else is incredibly useful? The second really incredibly useful thing, and this is what makes this problem truly devious and nasty, is this. So I'm gonna let that marinate for a little bit before I say anything. So make sure you have that written down. And again, you could use one to four instead of four to 16. Doesn't matter. Okay, marination time over. So if you're curious about where this came from, it came from the same idea as before, cross multiplication. When I cross multiply, I get 4H equals 16R. Then I differentiated with respect to time. When I differentiate H with respect to time, that's dH dt, so 4 dH dt equals 16, the derivative of r with respect to time is one dr dt, so 16 dr dt. And we're not done with this problem being obnoxious. We are solving for, what, what were we solving for again? Do we remember? How fast does the water level fall? So what is it we're solving for in this equation? It's not dv dt, okay? We figured out r and h and r again. What are we solving for? We are solving for this.
That's what you're solving for. You're solving for DHCT. That's how fast does the water level fall. And the reason why I bring that up is because using that thing we just looked at, we know what DRDT is. Now it's gonna feel awkward and wrong because we're not gonna replace DRDT with a number, but we can take DRDT and say DRDT is one fourth of DHDT. And we have moved this problem further along because it is now solvable. We can solve for DHDT because even though there's two DHDT terms right here, we can solve for one variable now. So what does it look like if we're actually gonna solve this? Well, DVDT, that's negative two. We have one third pi times two. The radius we said was three. The height was told to us is 12. And I multiply that by not dr dt, but one fourth dh dt. Okay, plus, oh no, I'm about to crash. Oh boy. Oh, don't crash on me. Sorry for being a bonehead. Oh, come on, laptop. Let's make this the one time you don't crash when I plug you in. Okay, wish me luck, guys. Maybe seeing you in a few. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I've done something right. Must be all of my good living and smart choices. I'm sure that's it. Anyway, uh, where was I? I'm really excited for this to be in the video someone else is going to watch. By the way, that's going to be pretty sweet. <laughs> yes, poggers indeed. All right, smart board screen is shared, right? Yes, we're good. Okay, we're back at it. And then I promise we're gonna be done for a little while because this problem is serious business. I just gotta recollect where I was. Ah, one third pi times three squared times the DHDT. Now, I'm not going to take time to actually solve this for DHDT, but you can solve it pretty much however you would like. So this one could be solved without a calculator. It's going to be an exact value that's icky and has pi in the denominator, but you can. And then when you go ahead and do part two, I want you to think about what's going to be different here. Anyway. That is it for that one.